So I've got the great, great pleasure now to introduce our next speaker, Rüdiger Schöttle. And we quoted earlier today um, David Deutsch about Fabric of Reality, who talks about parallel realities. Rüdiger has always had many parallel realities. He's an artist. In 68, he founded a gallery who has done landmark exhibitions, um, uh, many, many. He's a landscape architect, a writer, a theoretician, a curator. The list is very long. He also has collaborated a lot with Glenn Branca, follows very nicely with Günther Vogt and his collaboration with artists. Rüdiger worked with Glenn Branca, with Dan Graham, Jeff Wall, and uh, Ruth Gross. Actually, the project I'd like to mention uh, uh, foremost here in the introduction is the Theatergarten Bestiarium. We've mentioned it before about Rodney Graham because he was part of this project. And it was actually conceived by Rüdiger Schöttle and produced by Chris Derkon first at PS1 in 1989 and was actually rebuilt um, a few months ago at the Haus der Kunst in Munich. The Theatergarten Bestiarium drew on the Baroque Garden. The exhibition was conceived as a product of the collaboration of all of the participants involved, which created a combination of real images and imagination, thereby generating a unique world of shimmering, ephemeral projections and reflections through which the visitor moves, like in a garden. The resulting Gesamtkunstwerk brought together architecture, music, photography, film, theater, and inspired a whole upcoming later generation of artists and also curators. As Richard Hamilton, whom I'd like to mention here, once said, we only remember exhibitions which also invent a new display feature. And Theatergarten Bestiarum is such an exhibition we remember forever. It invented a new display feature. A very warm welcome to Rüdiger Schettle. Good evening. Um, I want to speak, as Hendrik told you, about uh, our garden, uh, City Garden, Bestiarium. I want to read something about that. While I'm speaking, you will see a documentary of the piece, Theater Garden, Bestiarium. I hope it will come here. You will see it here. At the Haus der Kunst in Munich, in the spring of this year. In regard to giving you some information about this piece, I would like to start by reading the introduction in my essay. An essay which was the starting point for the whole project and which was published by MIT Press in the ex exhibition catalog Theater Garden Bestiarum, which arose on the occasion of its first showing at the Institute of Contemporary Art at PS1 in New York, 1989. So you will see it. This is Anna Bene. So, Psychomachia tells the story of a garden called Bestiarium, a garden facing both past and future, shining down on us as a golden age a garden with lakes reflecting the sky path leading to exits and glimpses of grottos, forests, and thickets. The bestiarium is like a moving mirror that helps us experience the beauty of the garden itself. So perhaps you will ask why bestiarium? This is a question Chris Durkin all, all, always uh, asked me, why? Bestiarium. So, why bestiarium? This is a world of violence, struggle, and happiness. Here, the desires and the passions are the wild animals on which the virtues are mounted. Restraint, intelligent courage, and justice hold the reins in order to guide the untamed forces of life along the road of human harmony with nature. Bestiarium is like a natural motor, motor that man employs, mastering it with his acumen and knowledge. For the showing of the Theatergarten Bestiarium at the Haus der Kunst, an excerpt of the film, I think, uh, yeah, it was before, L'année dernière marine bad by Alain René, was projected just before entering the work. Perhaps you will ask yourself why. I want to give you a short explanation. In the film Last Year in Marienbad, its English title, one is situated in a world of 
impreviousness surfaces above the depth of emotion in the past and prefigured future. It is the space of reflection of drama without the border to the depth of things. This means that the impreviousness of the surface allows its border to the depth to be part of the cinematic dynamic. At the staging of the work, Theodor Garden Bestiarion and the architecture of the Amalien book, where parts of the film were taken, the border is the moved and moving viewer within his physicality and emotions. Perhaps you remember Dan Graham mentioned the Amalien book in Nymphenburg, close to Munich. It's one of the best and outrageous example of a mirror hall. Now I want to give you some general information on the intentions and the meaning of the work. In 86, I showed Chris Durkin my concept up until its first showing at the Institute for Contemporary Art, PS1, in New York. In 89, the work continued to develop. The presentation there and the following in Sevilla were still in a period of development. After that, it was presented in Portier, Chateau d'Oran, Les Frenois, and in Cite du Polygar, and then in Munich. The whole work could be seen as a kind of orchestra, an ensemble which only gains its potential through the contribution of the individuals. Architecturally speaking, the work could be seen as a kind of grotto. There, there the, visitors, the visitor is confronted with a projected diaphany in contrary, uh, contra contrary to our moving images. The viewer doesn't fall into the immersion of the images because he still feels his physicality of his surrounding and his physicality of his own body. Seeing himself together with the other spectators, he became part of the staging. In psychological terms, the whole work reflects the tension between sovereignty and cruelty, staged as a drama. This stands in comparison to our everyday expression where sovereignty and cruelty merge into invisible, invisibility. This is the reason why I called it bestiarium. Many thanks to, uh, to the 13 participating artists. With them, this work could, would have not been possible. Thanks to Chris Durkin for his vision and for producing this piece. Thanks to Gita Tosa, who made the acquisition of Theater Garden Pestiarum by the Centre National des Arts Plastiques in 1990 possible. So, and so I heard uh, you told me that you came to Munich to, uh, to, to, have, to have a look. And um, uh, what was your impression also? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Rudiger, thank you very much, first of all, for your speech. Thanks a lot. Maybe we can sit down, yeah, oh. it's more comfortable. Sorry, I have my coat on. Now, before we talk about Munich and the impressions of, of the exhibition, I, I had two or three more questions about the beginning of the show. And it was obviously based on a, on a text you wrote in 86, Bestiarium, Theater and Garden of Violence, War and Happiness. And earlier today, we had Elen Sixu, who talked a lot, actually, about the same topic. She talked about two gardens in Algeria, who are the gardens of her childhood. Uh, on the one hand, a garden of extreme violence and war, and on the other hand, an almost utopic garden of, of happiness. And I was wondering what for you was the trigger, or as Elaine would say, the epiphany for this text, and if it had also to do with somehow gardens of your childhood, or what else somehow triggered it? How did it all start? A good question. I never thought about my childhood uh, because it was, um, yeah, 
this was not the, uh, the thing. The thing was that um, <coughs> uh, more or less in Munich, the uh, the uh, the uh, Amalienburg and the and and this uh, garden, uh, this gardening and uh, English garden and uh, and, uh, and and the Baroque garden <coughs> and uh, well, I have to say I was more interested in uh, in uh, the re reflection, re uh, uh, reflection about uh, mirroring and so on, not so much about garden. I was on, I, w I have to say, uh, the garden. I was on, always wondering why in in, in, in this in this uh, baroque garden are so many uh, joggers or I mean running around and. Uh, it looked uh, di a little bit depressive, and uh, I had the idea. Uh, I, I was reading some some garden things, and so that in the old times it could have been better, or something like this. But perhaps it's just a big mistake. And uh, well, and then well, it's, it's, you were reading sometimes like uh, Horace Walpole, and so this is quite nice and uh, very interesting. Like here, you have great, great uh, gardening, and like uh, this grotto in Twickenham, and so. On. A second question I wanted to ask you is to actually come back to Richard Hamilton, because Richard Hamilton always said, I mean, if you think about Duchamp's realist exhibition, we think about the callbacks in Paris and then the ropes in New York. He said, we remember exhibition because of the display feature. And you obviously came up with the display feature also for this exhibition, which are these tables and much more than that. It's the, it's the overall environment for mm -hmm. it. Could you talk a little bit about your thoughts about the display feature when you when you invented the exhibition? Uh, it's an interesting question. I mean, now I get uh, uh, now perhaps I can uh, explain about uh, childhood or something like this. Uh, as many trials and perhaps every child is interested in uh, in a kind of cave and in the cellars and cave and make a, and make a cave. So um, I also like to make a kind of cave and and, uh, and uh, the, uh, out of the cave come a kind of grotto. And uh, you could see this, uh, and not, then I changed the grotto into kind of uh, yeah, illuminated, and, and I, I would call it diaphan uh, grotto. Uh, the di diaphane is an ex expression about the in the, uh, in, in the Gothic uh, window ch uh, churches, the windows. So you see something. You can see. Outside and uh, and uh, in to your uh, to your how can I say well to your own imaginations. Maybe now we can talk. And that was my third question about Munich and the idea of actually restaging this exhibition because it's something which is extremely rare. This idea that actually an exhibition um, it's something very frequent with operas. Uh, or other productions with living art from would somehow later again restage them. But with exhibitions, it's very, very rare that years after uh, an exhibition is actually restaged. And even more rarely so ha does it happen that it, an entire exhibition is collected. I once spoke with Daniel Buren about this, and he says, I mean, given the fact that exhibitions are the medium of art in the 20th century, it's astonishing how rare it is that an entire exhibition gets collected. And obviously, Theatergarten Bestiarium was collected uh, in France, and that also permitted then mm. this reconstruction or this re-exhibition in Munich. Now, for me, I can't compare it to the original show because I, for me, it was too early. I wasn't uh, 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 in New York or France in, in, the, in the 80s when it happened. Um, I actually read the catalog in the early 90s when I met Alana Heiss for the first time. And for me, Munich was the first time I, I saw the show um, in real. So I was just very curious if you could talk a little bit about this aspect of, uh, uh, yeah, of it being collected and then of it being re-shown, and to which extent it was different than from the original show. Yes, it's, it was different from the uh, New York uh, show, too. But in general, it was, uh, it was good luck, very good luck, that uh, the uh, French state collection bought it. And so it, it's still, it's still uh, together, but we have to, to work on it, to keep it together. Otherwise, it would be uh, spread, spread apart. In the beginning, in the very beginning, uh, many, uh, there, uh, there were a lot of tension, and, uh, and um, they wanted to, to break up uh, uh, the work. I mean, 
some some dealers and so on, they wanted to mix it. But at the end, but then the, uh, the at the end it uh, stays together, and we are always keeping <coughs> uh, the work to, to be like that. And it, it's a kind of you can you can see it as a kind of opera or, or something like that. And, and to get, but here in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the, this short film, that's uh, the, uh, there was no sound, so uh, because you have to. Uh, well, uh, speaking and so on. But uh, together with this Glenn uh, Branca uh, music, it was very interesting, but very nice. It's a kind of, um, you can, you, you are, you're really um, into your own imagination. But uh, you are not totally lost because you always see the other visitors. One very last question. When I asked Elaine about uh, Elaine Sixo about her unrealized garden, she told us about an unrealized garden book, but she also told us about this idea of a cemetery as her unrealized garden. And I was wondering if you have uh, any unrealized gardens, utopic gardens, dream gardens, gardens which you haven't built yet, or other unrealized projects. Yes, I have. I mean, uh, I made mean a, a project for for Mali Le Roi uh, nearby Versailles, and. Uh, and uh, as you perhaps remember, there was a main castle, and uh, and beside were six by six uh, uh, castles for the uh, for uh, for the uh, um, Höflinge, the uh, the cor uh, courtesan, and, um, and, uh, and but you can there's not, nothing left. But uh, my plan was is to change the uh, the. Uh, this little houses for the courtesans into cages, into uh, bird cages. So, <laughs> but this is only very short. <laughs> I mean, more, I always played with uh, zodiac and so on. But this is, a, this is one, one idea I had. And, um, but uh, my main, uh, one of my main interested interest was in this garden, uh, or in this kind, in the Bessarium, about uh, to 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 uh, show uh, the tension, as I told you, uh, I read in the text between the uh, the sovereignty and cruelty, and uh, and the, because uh, it's not a garden of happiness or the all, it has all these aspects and all the life aspects. Aspects and also with the artists. I mean, it, it, uh, the uh, the uh, the artwork in comparing to the other artworks. It, it's a kind of uh, tension. You never. Uh, it's also you can <coughs> also see it as a kind of cruelty. And uh, I mean, one one interesting thing about uh, about uh, cruelty is uh, to give you an, an example is uh, in the United States, uh, the uh, death pe uh, penalty, penalty, yeah, yeah. penalty is still going on in not uh, in some. And, um, but it was uh, some time ago, uh, ago, it was forbidden. And then, be because of human rights, it, 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 that says, well, cruelty, it's too cruel, it's, it, it, it's cruelty, and therefore it's, ag it's against uh, uh, human rights. And then uh, they, say, uh, they, they, they said, well, uh, we uh, make it without cruelty, and we, uh, we, we, we just make it uh, with uh, injections. So, and therefore, there's again uh, this uh, death penalty. And, um, I think this is also a very interesting aspect how, uh, uh, how cruelty is not shown, or, uh, and, uh, but it's still there, and uh, more and more. And, uh, and, uh, and in, in the garden, in, in our project, I, uh, I also wanted to show uh, this, this aspect as be that, that should it's a kind of scene aspect. You can, you, you can see also the tension. It's very abstract, perhaps. The tension between one piece and the other piece, and so on. It's a, it's a whole, whole aspect. And uh, and and the 
and the body, uh, your own body, and so on. Rudiger, thank you so very, very much. Thanks a lot. Vielen Dank. Danke. Okay.